Several days ago, I made a bunch of leftists angry with an Instagram post where I said that Cartoon Network has gone full alt-right. The story's actually a bit old. You may have seen it. Cartoon Network did a PSA where a little white girl and black girl talk about their racial experiences and why it matters that you see them for their race. I made the point that they went alt-right to draw a parallel between white identitarianism and leftist identitarianism, of which there's not a particularly large difference. Now, many leftists said, oh, you think the left are the real racists? Well, first, let me say this. For those that are not familiar with the ideology of anti-racism, most people assume it just means don't be racist. That's not what it means. It literally means be racist. Ibram Max Kendi, who is one of the most cited individuals on the matter, says the only solution to past discrimination is present discrimination. And the only solution to present discrimination is future discrimination. He has quite literally stated there will always be racial discrimination. And he's encouraging it. Now, I'm not too interested in rehashing the Cartoon Network story. Today's segment is about anti-racist classroom in Sacramento. I want to explain to you exactly what anti-racist means. And I want to show you why I believe ultimately this is veiled white supremacy. Oh, I know you've heard the word a million times, the phrase. I'm not saying this pseudo garbage white supremacy that has a nebulous meaning. I mean, quite literally, people who think white people for some reason are superior, be it white or non-white, they, they, they believe this. It is a leftist identitarian ideology. It's particularly fascinating to see so many news stories claim that the Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio, who is not a white man, is a non-white white supremacist as if the Clayton Bigsby sketch from Dave Chappelle is a real thing. But I will tell you, there is something that I have seen that I would, I would liken to some kind of envy. And I was told that simply by saying it, oh, they would get so triggered. But what else would you call it when you have this viral video? I think I have it pulled up where a, a young black woman and a young Asian man are complaining about how they're not white enough. And she says, you're closer to white than I'll ever be, as if it's something to strive for. Yeah, most of you probably know that I grew up in a, from a, in a mixed race family in a racially diverse neighborhood, and this never happened. We were never jealous of anybody based on what race they were. It just, that wasn't a, a thing in our minds. But let's talk about what's happening in your schools. And I can, I can show you the anti-racist classroom from Sacramento City Unified School District to explain why they are teaching your children to be white supremacists. They claim they're trying to make your children not racist. That's not true. They're trying to trigger what is called a white racial awakening. They say it all the time. They want your kids to see color. In the PSA from Cartoon Network, the little white girl says that it matters that she's white because her experience is different. That is laying the seeds. That's planting the seeds. They say, what do you mean? You're telling white people to recognize their white privilege is going to make them racist? Yes. Let me explain. Let me show you this and it'll blow your mind. If you are someone who's familiar with this and you're interested, you know, keep watching. And if you're someone who's never heard this before, let me break it down for you. But for everybody else and everybody in between, please share this with people to explain to them what is going on in our schools. Sacramento Dist City Unified School District posted this September 29th, 2020, anti-racist classroom. They say Sacramento City Unified School District is committed to a sustained journey of explicit and purposeful learning, reflection, and practice of eradicating systemic racism in our schools. While acknowledging there is no right path, we urge our community and educators to stay the course in having difficult conversations, even when it is, it is uncomfortable. We have created an anti-racist classroom to support opportunities for the district community to learn, connect, and build its capacity to address racism and injustice. This includes providing an understanding. Uh, 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 this this includes providing an understanding of how racism impacts the lot, the lived experience of people of color and indigenous people, is systemic, and has been part of many foundational aspects of society throughout history and can be manifested in both individual attitudes and behaviors, as well as formal and unspoken policies and practices within the institution. They say visit the anti-racism racist classroom resource at sites.google SCUSD. OK, I would like to show you the racial affinity group section, which should explain to you in no uncertain terms why are they why they are uh, how they are trying to teach your children to be white supremacists. And I, I, again, I'm not using the hyperbolic leftist version. I mean, quite literally, listen, 
They say what and why racial affinity groups. Racial affinity groups offer a structure of inquiry and can address many needs. They support us in exploring what has been forbidden, forgotten, and unhealed. For example, in racial affinity groups, white people can discover together their group identity. They can cultivate racial solidarity and compassion and support each other in sitting with the discomfort, confusion, and numbness that often accompany white racial awakening. That is a verbatim quote from this page. Let me just explain it again. They say they are teaching your children this in Sacramento. White people can discover together their group identity. I ask you why? Their group identity based on race? Why not based on being an American, a great American melting pot of all different backgrounds, cultures, and races? Why must you insist that white people find their white racial identity? They can cultivate solidarity based on race? It literally says this. They can cultivate racial solidarity, compassion, and support each other. Wow. They say this, they go on to say, they can also discern white privilege and its impact without the aid of or dependence on people of color, POC. White people who have formed racial affinity groups report that they recognize their collective commonality and shared history, as well as the impact that their privilege has had on other races and on each racial affinity group member. Okay, they may be saying, aha, we got you, Tim. They're talking about white privilege. Let me ask you, do you think that when a group of people based on race find their shared history, as they claim, sympathize with each other, do you think they're going to talk about how they oppress people? Or do you think they will be aggrieved by the things that have been done to them? Do you think that these people will discover their shared history? And what is that shared history? You may be saying, oh, it's the history of colonization. Okay, read the Declaration of Independence. In the Declaration of Independence, they explicitly state that the crown was using indigenous Americans against them. That's the shared history of, of, of white people, the indigenous who are attacking them. The point I'm trying to make, when you ask children who are white to recognize their race and their white racial identity and shared history, and their shared history in, includes an aggrieved status from other races who have attacked them. Do you think people will choose to sacrifice themselves on the altar? Or do you think they will eventually say, I will fight to survive? Biology tells us that animals choose survival. Sometimes they don't. Humans can be particularly different. But I would be willing to bet a large sum of money that while you may have many liberals and leftists supporting outgroup bias, meaning they're less favorable towards people of their own race, tell them to. Re- <laughs> this is the craziest thing. Let me slow down. There was a study that gets shared around a lot. It talks about how out of all these different races, the only group of people that have an out group preference, meaning they like other people instead of their own race, are white liberals. What happens when you take these kids and tell them to share a common history and have an awakening? They're going to have an in group preference for their own race, not an out group preference. This is how anti racism's actual intention, in my opinion, it's that they're actually trying to make kids racist. They want kids of all races to see everyone based on race. They want to get them while they're young. And I think it's just bad, bad news. It's remarkable how easily the left was co-opted. Of course, the conservatives, conservatives will say Democrats have always been the, the, you know, I'm sorry, conservatives will say Democrats have always been the party of racism, Jim Crow, etc. Here we go again. They say this, White people who have formed racial affinity groups report they recognize their collective commonality and shared history, as well as the impact their privileges had on other races and on other each racial affinity group member. I want to stress that point again, because the alt-right uses that exact same line. You know the difference is? They argue that white privilege actually benefited everybody else. Listen, I would like to live in a world where... We don't judge people based on the color of their skin. We judge them on the content of their character. But if you are telling children to form white racial awakening groups to recognize their common history and how their privilege has has affected other races, why assume they would assume something negative? Name every single white inventor and they're going to be like, wow, look at all the great things this race has done for people. You just assume that the, the, the majority race in this country is going to walk away. I've got some stats for you to make an important point. 
over on Wikipedia, race and ethnicity in the United States. Here's the breakdown in 2019. Non-Hispanic white is 60.1%. Hispanic and Latino of any race is 18.5. Black and African American is 13.4. Asian is 5.9. Two or more races is 2.8. Native Americans and Alaska Alaska Natives, 1.3%. Native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders is 0.2%. Let me now explain to you the absolute insidious nature and explain to you how bad it's going to get. Now, maybe you're white and maybe you don't care. Maybe you are a disaffected liberal or centrist and maybe you are woke curious. There are many moderates who think there's a discussion to be had with the woke and the critical race theorists about actual things we can do to improve, you know, to, to, to take some of their ideas to improve the circum- situation. I tell you this. It is dangerous flirtation with a dangerous ideology that will rewind the clock back before civil rights. And they've tried doing it in California. There was a bill that would have removed their civil rights language from the California Constitution in terms of education and public accommodation and public contracting. I'm sorry, not public accommodation, public contracting, employment and schools. It was rather scary. The argument from the left was, well, other states don't have this. So why should we? I don't think that makes sense to get rid of a law modeled after the 1964 Civil Rights Act simply because other simply because other states don't have it. Well, let me break down for you what I think is going to happen as these schools begin to indoctrinate these kids and tell them to form white collective racial awakening affinity groups. Non-Hispanic white is 60.1 percent. We can split that group up about right down the middle. Not entirely. You know, people in this country tend to lean a little bit to the left. So let's say that out of 60 percent, you have 28 percent that are conservative and you have about, you know, 32 percent that are liberal and leftist. You might be saying, see, those liberal and leftists have an outgroup preference, which will greatly benefit the other races, perhaps. But let me explain something to you. Hispanic and Latino is 18.5 percent. Why the white conservative group outnumbers them. How about black and African? Well, of course, the white conservative group outnumbers them. Of course, the white conservatives outnumber every single individual racial block. Maybe as the white leftists vote alongside these other races, there will be some anti, you know, identitarian policy that doesn't favor white people. But I'll tell you this. There may be idealistic woke leftists who believe in this critical race theory and white privilege. Most people don't speak this language. Most people don't understand this. And that includes most white people who are probably just like, what? Think about what happened when Donald Trump banned critical race theory trainings and contracting with companies that have them. The media framed it as racial sensitivity training. That's not what it was. Critical race theory is not racial sensitivity training. Telling people to recognize their race and have a white racial awakening is not telling them to be sensitive at all. Now, maybe they'll tell them you're evil colonizers or something like that. But what do you think is going to happen when an individual feels attacked based on their race? What do you think is going to happen when you tell these people these things and these white people are sitting there confused for the first time learning this? You think it's racial sensitivity training? No, it's going to be a guy saying, why are you yelling at me? I didn't do anything. I'm not racist. And then he's going to get mad. And then he's going to find other white people who have also had a white racial awakening. And then they're going to vote for policy based on what they want. Benefiting them uh, in their racial affinity group. And I'll tell you, when they talk about these racial affinity groups, it's really obvious why I oppose leftist identitarianism, isn't it? I would not be allowed in any of these affinity groups. It's already happened. I've experienced this at Occupy Wall Street. They told me to go shove off. So what do I do? I will not sit back as these fake leftists try and destroy centuries of work in civil rights. They have used clever language, anti-racism. If you think anti-racism means don't be racist, you are being manipulated. It quite literally means to be racist. It means you must be racist. Ibram X. Kendi, one of the one of the uh, foremost authors writing about this, has said this. He said, uh, as I mentioned, the only the only solution to past discrimination is future, is present discrimination, et cetera, et cetera. Make the discrimination inevitable. Here's what I see. A simple, a simple bit of arithmetic. Take each and every racial group. Tell them to recognize their race. Then go tell them to vote. What do you think people will do? 
You think all these people are altruistic? You think these people, you know, any one of these individuals, I don't care what your race is. I think you're going to vote to benefit yourself. It's like, you know, are you going to, if, if you have two parties, one guy's a, a, an environmentalist, one guy's a lumberjack, and there's a politician who says, uh, you know, you have a politician A and politician B. One guy says, protect the trees. The other guy says, open up industry. You know who they're going to vote for. They're going to be like, well, this one makes sense to me. You can also have areas where people just don't interact with each other and don't understand. And you can have a guy say, you know, vote for me and I'll do X. You could, there could be someone in one part of the country who has no idea what a lumberjack is thinking and just say, I'll vote for the guy who benefits me. Tell all of these children to recognize their race and I'll tell you what they'll do. You'll get that politician talking about racial affinity and anti-racism and offering up programs specifically based on race and they'll vote for it and they'll vote for themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. Look, I understand that a bunch of these leftists believe they have this, you know, inherent privilege, which has guaranteed them access and all these great things. And there is there is some truth to the idea of a majoritarian privilege that if there are more people who look like you, there is an ingrained bias in humans that, you know, humans are inherently predisposed to favor those who look like themselves. And it's not necessarily a race thing. It's even like facial features. It's even shoes and clothing. It's something I could tell you about working for nonprofits. It's a fact. They say when you see a guy in a suit, don't approach him and be like, yo, what up, dude? You walk up to the guy in, su- in the suit and say, how do you do, sir? Just a moment of your time. Shake his hand because you want to mirror them because people trust those that are like themselves because it's safe. But that does include race. That's why Brett Weinstein said we have to fight to resist that, that, that you know, that instinct humans seem to have. And we need to realize that we're all people. We could come together. This is the opposite of that. But I tell you, you get these kids to vote on this stuff. And then what happens in the next several decades where we've seen many people point out, many organizations point out that white people are losing majority status? Well, what happens when they become a minority? Now they're a a minority voting for their rights and they're going to vote in a large voting block. That's where we're headed. Instead of heading into a direction where we're going to learn to live together and expand upon the ideas of civil rights, you have woke leftists, many for tribal reasons who don't care, destroying everything. I think they're white supremacists. Let me throw it to this, uh, this tweet right here. You may have seen the video, it went pretty viral. Let me, uh, let, let, let me play, well, I don't know if I can play the clip. YouTube will probably strike me. But this woman right here says, you don't get it. You're closer to white than I'll ever be. And to me, that's a shocking, shocking and strange thing to put into people's minds. Why is Netflix putting out a show where two different ethnic minorities are complaining about how it's, they're not white enough? How, what, do, what does that mean? How do they view what it means to be white? It sounds like envy. She says, you don't get it. You're closer to white than I'll ever be. And the guy says, together we make a whole white person. Is that how they feel? I don't know anybody who says stuff like this, but I'll tell you why it's scary. This anti-racism training, they are teaching minorities to wish to be white. They are not telling them to respect their own history and culture. Quite literally, the Sacramento Unified Classroom is telling white people to come together to discover their history and their privilege and their power. So what do you think happens when you go to all the little minorities and tell them that white people are privileged above them and always will be, and it's only through hard work? You're going to get a bunch of people saying they wish they were white. That's literally what Netflix is telling these people. You're seeing this girl complain. She just wishes. It's not fair. That's creepy. That's scary. It's weird. I was never told to think that way. I was told to be proud of, I was told to be proud of my family, and I was, because my parents chose love over racism. And so I grew up thinking like, it's really cool, isn't it? That I come from a mixed background. That's the future, right? We're going to come together, love one another. It's hippies under the rainbow. No, the left has become a death cult of, of either supporting the most insane politicians for stupid reasons, simply because the orange man is bad, or you've got the critical race cult, the dogma of people telling white kids to see their own race and then telling minorities basically to, to look, look at this Netflix thing. It's not even me saying this. Okay. I don't even want to say this. Why did Netflix put out a video where it shows two minorities wishing, like saying that, you know, you don't get it. You're closer to the white than I'll ever be as if it's something to strive for. That to me is disgusting. And then the guy, you know, he tells her, you want to go oppression Olympics. It's cringe. This is what they're doing to our kids. 
And I and I, I, I think it's it's freaky. Look at this. Boston Public School suspends advanced cl- class enrollment test, says too many students in them are white or Asian. Now, I already know there's a lot of people who claim, see, but they're anti white or whatever. No, 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 no. That, it's meaningless, meaningless. W- when I hear people talk about anti white stuff, I'm like, that's meaningless. You know why? The issue is racial segregation and racial affinity groups. It doesn't matter if someone has a school or a business and they choose one to, to, to exclude white people. It matters that they're choosing to segregate the races in general. And I'll tell you where this leads. When schools keep telling white or Asian people these things, they are going to inflame segregation. And then you have white or Asian groups forming. What are they supposed to do? They can't be in the class. Well, they'll go form, form their own group, won't they? And the left has been trying to get rid of these discrimination laws so that people can discriminate. And then you will see this. I said in California, I was talking to a lefty friend of mine. And when California was trying to repeal that thing in their constitution, where it would say that you could, they basically wanted to make it legal to discriminate on the basis of race. I said, what do you think's going to, like, do you, do you know what the percentage of people in California are that are white? I think the number is like 70%. It's, it's more white than the rest of the country. And I was like, okay. And, and so they said to me, yeah, but these cities are very diverse. You know, people that are very liberal, they wouldn't do that. And I was like, do you think there are conservative towns in California? And she said, well, yeah, of course. Do you think these conservative towns are mostly white? She goes, well, yeah, of course they are. And I was like, so when you tell them they can legally discriminate on the basis of race, do you think they will? And she said, yeah, probably. Now, I don't know that they actually will. But how insane to give that power to people. And now it's spreading. You know, U of M receives $5 million to ra- launch new anti-racism research for Health Equity Center. You just Google search anti-racism and you can see, look at this. There's a bunch of it. YWCA will spur anti-racism, anti-racism with Ibra, Ibra Max Kendi, all this stuff. Anti-racism does not mean do not be racist. I would tell you right now, don't be racist. That's bad. Judge people on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Now, I'm sorry, anti-racism says to judge them on the color of their skin. Don Lemon went on TV and said, see color. And Cartoon Network is saying the exact same thing. It's a shame. I grew up in a world thinking that we were going to be moving towards equality, like actually respecting each other and not taking race into account. Well, I'll tell you this. I refuse to be a second class citizen, and I've already experienced it under these lunatics. If I don't agree with their dogma, they tell me I'm white. And if I do agree, they say, see, you're a good mixed race person to do as you're told. Well, I refuse. You can you can shove off. I'll have nothing to do with your death cult and your dogma. But my friends, they are teaching kids this, and I think it's already lost. It's in the schools. And there it is. Well, I don't know what I'll say. I think it's just going to get worse. But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.